Hey everybody, this is BuilderDude35, and this week's tutorial is going to be about how to make a proportional line follower for your EV3 robot. A lot of you have probably seen my previous video on line following, and in that video I cover how to make a simple zigzag line follower. And it's very effective, but the one problem is, whenever you try to do something more curvy than a straight line, you have to adjust it a little bit. But with a proportional line follower, we're going to be making a more complex program, but it's much more adaptable. So I'm first going to explain to you how a proportional line follower works. So let's just say for a second, for the sake of this example, that we have a black line with a white border, like the ones that they use for FLL. So your robot is going to have a light slash color sensor pointed at the ground, and it's going to read the reflected light intensity off of the ground and bring that value back to the robot. So when you have your color sensor directly completely over the line, all the, ro the color sensor is going to see is black. So it's going to see its darkest value, and that tells the robot it's completely on the line. There's no correction to be made. And as you stray off of that black line, what happens is the um, color sensor will see more and more of the white and less of the black. The color value, or light value for that matter, will get progressively higher, and that tells the robot to get a progressively more sharper correction to go back onto the line, until finally the robot sees nothing but white, doesn't see any of the black line. And that's the point at which the robot sees the highest value and says to itself, wow, I'm really off the line, now I need to make the greatest correction. So the, in uh, summary, the proportional line follower gets its name because the light value recorded from the light sensor is proportional to the correction that the robot is going to make to get back onto the line. Since this specific line follower uses just one color sensor, and therefore that color sensor must have two distinct colors to know which side of the target path that it's going to be on. What's going to end up happening is the robot isn't necessarily going to be directly following on top of the black line. It's going to be following kind of to the side a little bit, and to be more specific, directly between the white and the black lines. So when it's over the white side, it knows it's too far to the right and needs to turn left. When it's over the black, it knows it's too far left and needs to turn right. And its target path is directly in between the black and the white, which is highlighted. And when the robot makes these corrections to get back onto its target path, that's where we're going to apply the proportional algorithm, where the farther onto the black, the sharper of a turn it's going to make to be back onto the target, and vice versa with the white. So the last thing that you need to do before you start programming is finding what light value is going to tell the robot that it's on the target path. And what you're going to do to figure this out is take your minimum value, which is always zero, and then measure your highest value in port view, and for me that was 70, and then split the difference. So my target path ended up being 35%, and this is what my robot looks like when it's at 35% reflected light intensity. It's about halfway between the black and the white, and that's what you want. This is how I construct my proportional line follower program, and it's a little bit different from normal. So first you're going to take out a loop block and a switch block. What you're going to do is set the switch to reflected light intensity. So you go to color sensor, compare reflected light intensity. You're going to go here and choose 5, which is less than or equal to, and then set for this number whatever your target path value is. So mine was 35, like I said before. You're going to enter whatever your target um, reflected light intensity path value is there. In this top section, what we're going to do is take out three pro, uh, I'm sorry, four programming blocks. So we're going to go to sensor, take out this color sensor block here. We're going to go into this red section, data operations, and take out two math blocks directly after that. And then the last thing that we're going to do is going to into the green command section, and we're going to take a move steering block out and put that all the way at the end here. We're going to set this color sensor block from color. We're going to wait for it to come up, measure reflected light intensity, and then what we're going to do is set this math block to subtraction, take this data wire and plug it in as A, and for B, type in your target value again. Like I said, minus 35. And then for this equal to, you're going to plug it in as the A for the next block here. And you're going to set this to divide. And we're going to divide it by 1.5. 
and then this equals this result is going to be the steering factor for our steering block and you're just going to plug it in here for steering lastly what you're going to do is turn this block on just on and I'm, I'm setting my power to 25 percent and specifically negative 25 because negative power makes my robot go forward so just use whatever makes your robot go forward and at 25 percent so we have the top case of the program here and to program the bottom case of my builder dude 35 line follower believe it or not all you're going to do is just copy and paste that same programming thing into the bottom so because of the nature of the program this allows us to have the same exact programming whatever you call it the same string of code in the top and the bottom uh, thanks to the switch block to make this program work with a high tech the color sensor v2 all you would do is substitute the ev3 color sensor block for the high tech the color sensor block as shown you will put it on rgb mode and use this white tab as your reflected light intensity and just plug it in like that so just don't forget to set not set this to infinity because if you did have it on infinity the robot would just follow the line forever and crash into something somewhere and get stopped that wouldn't be fun so just choose whatever sensor is going to stop this loop and allow the robot to go on to the next part of the program whether that's like a certain number of degrees that the robot sees a different color at the end of the line with its color sensor just whatever it is that will stop your robot at the end it's time to test out our program now always remember when you're using this program to keep the robot on the right side of the line because the robot will follow the line slightly to the right side as i explained before So now I'm going to show you how this program works. What the switch block does is it sees if the reflected light intensity is less than or equal to your target value, which if it is, if it's true, that means that the robot's on the black line, and if it's false, then it means the robot's on the white line. So if it's on the black line, what it does is it's, it's only values that are less than or equal to 35, so it subtracts 35, so that means it's going to get either a negative steering value or zero and that negative steering value is going to make the robot steer in one direction back onto the target path and on the bottom here since we have values that are only greater than 35 when you subtract 35 you should always get a positive value and so it's going to make the steer the robot steer in the opposite direction to get back onto the target path so here we have negative steering to get back onto the path and here we have positive steering and that's just basically how that works and the proportional part of the program comes in because after you subtract 35 from the light intensity the farther away it is from zero so if it's more positive or more negative the robot knows to make a sharper correction and it's uh, the correction that it makes is constantly variable so it can change to whatever it needs to be to suit the situation Thanks guys for stopping by this week. Remember I have new EV3 tutorials every Thursday, so don't forget to stop by then and subscribe if you like this channel. Thank you, and I'll see you with next week's tutorial. Bye.